All right, welcome everyone. Uh, our first ever episode of Party in Peril. Uh, thank you yeah. all for being here. Thanks for inviting us to our own home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for inviting us to sit at our own table. <laughs> it's kind of a jerk move, Devin. Uh, so we are going to be playing some Dungeons and Dragons today. This is the fifth edition uh, that Wizards of the Coast has put out. We played a little intro episode some time back, but this is now the official first adventure of this party, and I hope you guys are excited. Adventure! Looking forward to it, man. I yes. I mean, we've played so many tabletop games here and there throughout the years, but this is the first time we're doing it for, like, other people, so I'm, like, nervous a little bit, <laughs> but yeah. or I don't know. We're going to do it. We're gonna no, there's it. just no pressure. It's just the crippling anxiety that we're going to be feeling of whether or not we're going to be socially accepted or not. <laughs> so yeah. I, I feel that I'm going to be judged by all the D&D players out there because oh, yeah. this is my I like, judge you now no, but like, judgment. like this is this is my first time mm-hmm. doing like D&D in maybe 10 years 10 yeah. plus years now yeah. this is my first time actually playing a character I've only DM'd and I've only DM'd one game so like I, I'm excited to actually be something instead of mm-hmm. Telling everyone else what to do <laughs> instead of you being the one to flip through the book. Like I, I don't even know exactly. what role that's supposed yes. to be. So let's, <laughs> let's we'll just make something up. I don't know how yep. to seduce the crocodile. Let me look. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, awesome. I'm glad you guys are uh, uh, here to enjoy this lovely game for which I have spent um, an undescript number of hours writing. And before we begin, Chris, I know you're elsewhere, but please make sure you right. have your token next to you. This will be your one inspiration that you have. I've got Again, it. inspiration being that at any time, should a role displease you, uh, you may spend that to re-roll, or you can spend it to allow a, another player to re-roll. So are you going to let us do that if it's a critical fail, or are we stuck with that fail? No, you can use it to alleviate nice. a critical All fail. Right. However, if you roll a cool. second critical fail, you're stuck with it, and chances are, I will laugh at you. Hey, on on advantages, yeah. I know I know you roll twice, but if you roll a crit fail first, do you still get to roll again, or is crit yeah. fail just stuck? No, yeah, you get to roll again. That's the that is the advantage of okay. advantage. I didn't know if, like <laughs> if crit fails were so bad that it's like it took the advantage out of disadvantage. No, you know, oh, okay. Cri- critical fails are not the uh, the end all of of any rolls. You don't just roll it and then we all make fun of you and you have to leave the table in <laughs> shame or something. Very yeah, careful. the first critical roll you uh, fail, you die. We'll, yeah, um, that's we'll, just it. We'll yeah. house rule that later. You have to of do a uh, harakiri. <laughs> you have to swallow a folded frisbee. <laughs> Enjoy. But uh, to kick this off, uh, is everybody ready? Everybody have their character sheets, spells so prepared, ready. equipment mm-hmm. ready to go? I'm ready. For the most part, yes. Yes. Perfect. For anybody, for any, a lot of people listening, they probably know who we are, but for other oh, people, yeah. they might not. So yeah, maybe, posterity okay. stick. Yeah, go around. We'll go around the table. Are we starting with me? Yeah, oh, you're yeah, the oh, hi. Yeah. oh, hi. Um, oh, so, hi. I am uh, Devin Dury. I am the dungeon master for this lovely adventure. So, I will be playing all the NPCs and monsters and taking these guys on a fun adventure. You may recognize me from my Tuesday streams with Joseph when we play on Twitch and we, um, I rage and Joe just kind of laughs at me. Rage tinkle. Rage tinkle. <laughs> we all do. We all laugh. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm glad everyone's getting a chuckle at that. At least someone is. <laughs> I am Joseph, and I've been a voice that you've heard probably for many years now, some of you. Uh, but for first-timers, I'm the one of the co-creators of Nerd Sloth. I've been on many podcasts right now, the biggest one being Saturday Morning Cartoon Boom. Also on the Tuesday streams with Devin. And uh, yeah, just here to enjoy myself, have fun. What, uh, what character are you playing? Oh, I'm playing Jack, and he is a 13-year-old human rogue. Adorable. I just love that he's a kid. That's the best part. That's the best. <laughs> it, you know what, what What inspired me, actually, was watching the D&D cartoon that we reviewed for Cartoon Boom. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, I mean, it's that just a bunch sense. of kids playing the game. I mean, yeah. actually being in the, the uh, world of D&D. So, yeah. And most that, of them are terrible. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, we don't have to mention that. We don't have to bring it up. <laughs> You're supposed to be an old man, Devin. I saw that cartoon. Oh, the God. The DM is old. Uh, yeah, you're like an yeah. old, uh, old gnome or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The dungeon master. I am the dungeon uh, master. <laughs> uh, my name's Chris. I'm another co-founder of uh, Nerd Sloth. 
And you've probably heard me on Saturday Morning Cartoon Boom, if you listen to that, or um, previously on Night Marathon, uh, Know the Lore, Overwatch, or my solo streams on Slurred Nerd. And I am playing Shepard Black, the Dark Elf Drow fighter, with a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Shaddai. You may have heard of me through the archives on uh, Nerd Sloth. From previous episodes, like, um, was it Present Company Excluded, mm -hmm. um, Pillow Talk, Issues with Friends, Cine Freak. Yeah. So, oh, Nerds on Tap. We were Nerds all on, on Nerds on Tap. Yeah. We so, you forgot can, about that. Yeah. You can check me out in the archives if you want to, but I don't recommend it. I don't know. It. <laughs> that, uh, that Nerds on Tap episode that I was on. Yeah was quite fun yeah i'm usually yeah. very intoxicated or uh <laughs> yeah. very loud and inappropriate so my character will probably be sort of the same which i am playing a tiefling her name is avador she is very wise and she pities the people she surrounds herself with and what class is she she is a level one druid and she is avadorable. Avadorable. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> I mean, think think future tense on this, guys. Like people making dolls of our characters. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. The merch. We got to think about the if merch. No, if no one else does, I will. Merchandise. I will make dolls. Merchandise. <laughs> nice baseball. Merchandising. Merchandising. The flamethrower. The kids love this one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, very cool. Um, so... I'm really glad to have this adventure with you guys. So thank you for making such unique, exciting characters. I'm very excited for what we're going to be doing. Um, so without further ado, let's get into this adventure. How about it? Let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's Wonderful. Do it. So last we left our heroes, uh, you had all met up in the big capital of Fangor Highland in Jarlheim and had taken on employment uh, by the city guard that there is, uh, not the city guard, but the hands uh, the hands of the Ecclesia, uh, the church essentially, had commissioned people to uh, patrol and see what they could uh, find. There's been some reports happening in the what they call the Tomb of the Heretics. Um, thinking some grave robbers have been uh, poaching the area and stealing off with some old artifacts, uh, whether they were just trinkets and baubles or actual items of noteworthy uh, power. So you all have accepted, you gave your signed seals, you have your gear and are ready to adventure. You also have um, one of the um, sisters of the Ecclesia. Yeah. Sarah. Sarah of the Nine. Sarah of the Nine. Chris, yes. I love you so much, you note-taking brilliant bastard. We just got <laughs> our notebooks. <laughs> we just have these notebooks. Yeah. We, we just got them. We just got them. All right, but that's fine. Yes, Sarah had uh, met you just outside the city gates. Uh, you had made it over to the cemetery, uh, to which you had found, just outside the tomb of the heretic itself, a couple of dead, mangled bodies, to which Sarah had proclaimed that this is very important, and you have to get your tails inside there now. Is this like the tutorial level where we need an NPC to help us because this <laughs> battle is going to be really tough and we suck? Is that what this is? The warm up? It's not necessarily a, what, what I would call the tutorial area. This is just so I can have a nice rounded party of four, uh, which is what I usually like to have in, um, uh, in Dungeons and Dragons, usually. I see. Okay. Partly because four is a nice even number, and also because I had written the adventure a little difficult, I think. A little difficult. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so but we we'll, all we'll die in the, in the tutorial mission. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It's per the usual for me. Yeah, think uh, think the, uh, the the first boss in Dark Souls when you like you first come across that you know that kind of difficulty. Uh, as I mentioned, our heroes now stand before the entrance of the Tomb of the Heretic. A large mausoleum entrance stands before you. You can smell the musty air of, of the, the tomb itself wafting out of uh, its entrance. Sarah stands in front of you. She has a light breastplate on and a mace in one hand, her holy book at her side. She seems very reluctant to go in, but her resolve 
cannot be broken. She looks back to the rest of the party. I suppose there's no better time than the present. Hang on a second. Um, I have very good dark vision. <laughs> let me let me take a peek down here and see what see what we can see before we just head in there and basically die. Um, so so I've got the I've got dark vision of 120 feet. So yes. so I'm I'm looking down and I'm trying to see if if there's anything I can notice right away that might stand out as like we're gonna get ambushed or anything. You step forward. Shepard steps forward into the entrance. Go ahead and roll me a perception check. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's a critical fail. Are you oh, serious? No. Chris, <laughs> yes. Chris, this is the first roll of the game. Oh, no, this does Chris. not bode well at all. Chris. <laughs> oh, Chris. You go blind you know in one eye. I I'm know. Gonna, uh, did you hit yourself? <laughs> it, it, you know what? <clears throat> I did have quite a few ales back before we uh, got here. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I thought I saw something, but I am seeing quadruple at this point. So I, I don't know what's going on. You, yeah. uh, you, as you, you peer down into the opening, uh, you can see, basically, you, you step through a big old spider web, and you've got them all in your eyes right now, and you're like, oh, <laughs> do you see stupid things out of here. How did you turn uh, into Tommy my mouth. Boy? Like, <laughs> Yeah, but no one else can see you as you step through that spider web, so you just look like a crazy guy just flailing at nothing. <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> oh no, they're attacking! <laughs> oh no, it's Invisible Ghost! <laughs> uh, Sarah uh, reaches into her knapsack because she is a human who does not have the advantage of dark vision. She ignites a torch, so she has a torch in her uh, left hand, her mace in her right, and she slowly uh, pierces the darkness with her torch, and she will be taking a uh, quick look-see downward. If anybody else would like to roll a perception, you are more than welcome to. Yes, indeed. Don't roll a one. <laughs> I got a 12. What is perception on top of anything? Uh, so your perception, you should see it on your skills. Uh, if you, uh, if oh, you don't have anything trained into it. Okay, so I got a 16 total. Okay, perfect. All right. So uh, looking down, you do see that there is, it's pretty much just a dark corridor. Uh, it looks like the stairs lead down into an in, uh, antechamber. However, Looking down, you do see the faint glows of torchlight already slightly ignited down there in the antechamber. Is it are these torches moving at all, or is it like a set? It looks like it's set. Okay. Yeah. You just see you see the flicker of light across the the tile floor at the bottom. Mm. Guys, it looks like there's light down there already. So let's be careful. She uh Sarah nods in agreement with you and says, It appears the uh someone's already arrived ahead of us. I spit out a cobweb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just during a pause in dialogue. Just... <laughs> uh, but yes, you. Uh, uh, she begins her descent down, taking the lead. Uh, it is a corridor that would allow for people to march side by side. Um, would the group like to tell me their marching order? Last. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a kid. Uh, I'll, I'll, stay up, I'll stay up by Sarah. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, Sarah should probably go first. She's the one with the torch. She is the one with the torch, so she's leading with the light. And um, uh, so you would be beside her. Perfect. So Shepard and Sarah in front, Jack and Avador following behind. I, I don't know if it would benefit me at all at this point, but... In a group setting like this, will stealth help anything if I'm rolling it? Like, I know I can kind of hide myself, but can I do like a a group like, guys, let's kind of... Not necessarily. There's okay. no like group stealthing. You can try to assist others if they were to attempt to stealth. But looking on, you could already tell Sarah is wearing breastplate as well as a lot of her holy trinkets and things. 
she's already making a little bit okay. of cling clanging sounds. Well, well, that being the case, I'm going to try to at least stealth myself. So you just kind of see me behind everyone, mm-hmm. like, kind of like scooting mm-hmm. up against walls mm-hmm. and kind of like ducking under things. <laughs> go ahead okay, and roll me, go ahead and roll me that stealth. Oh, <laughs> if you could please. I probably shouldn't have done this. Um, <laughs> Perfect. Uh, let's see. Four. Ooh, uh, 12, twelve total. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, uh, descending downward into the uh, into the tomb, as I mentioned, you see that it does uh, descend quite deep. You go about what you think is sixty feet in a diagonal downward until you reach a large antechamber. Uh, your thoughts are confirmed as you do get down there, and you see that there is two torches on either side of a large stone slab door that is slightly ajar. The torches are set into a uh, uh, preset sconch, but they uh, they appear to be pretty dimly lit, which leads you to believe that you think that they uh, they might have already been lit for a while. I'm picking one torch up. Uh, so so I'm not having my my shield is not equipped any longer. I'm just holding my sword in one hand, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna have the torch in the other. Yeah, sword in your or the the torches in your off hand. Yes. All right, and you stand in front of this slightly ajar stone slab. Um, As you peer inside this antechamber, you do see that there is numerous religious scrawlings completely covering the stone, uh, uh, the stone walling. It looks very, very old. There's dust and mildew. It's it's this is just a very grimy, very it's it's been time has passed here and you can tell that only recently has it been disturbed would it be any kind of uh dialogue any of us would recognize do you think uh should i you would be the only one um avador is able to decipher some of the religious texts as some are dwarven and some are elven but they do appear to essentially say the same thing and they all seem to be prayers and it basically the gist of each of them is let those who have cast their sin aside rest easy now. Well, that sounds good. <laughs> Shepherd, you're full of sin. I don't know if you'll be resting easy. <laughs> Does Depends she share on how this? much have I had to drink? <laughs> do, do you share this with us since we can't read it? Oh, yeah. I'll okay. share it. Okay. Uh, okay. Sarah herself will look up and uh, notice that you were able to decipher this. And she says... Yes, this was the final resting place of many of a scourge-blooded individual. Uh, The hands themselves have placed many abominations in here themselves. Oh, lovely that we're down here now. Great. She smirks a bit at that and remarks that, worry not, I, uh, while I, uh, worship beside many of my brethren and sisters in the Ecclesia, I simply am here to try to keep these artifacts uh, hidden away, which is where they should be, and keep these brigands out. I'm making sure to angle myself to where she, Sarah, is in front of me at all times, because I know (laughs) that she, out of all of us, I think she can probably take the, the most of a beating with that armor she has. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, she she looks she looks fairly battle tested. You will you you do take notice of that. She is she doesn't look to be just some random monk from a church who decided to take up arms. No, she looks like she's been practiced with it. But I'm not making it obvious and I'm trying to use mm-hmm. her as a meat shield. I just I'm just <laughs> casually walking behind her okay. <laughs> every chance I get. All right, but y'all uh y'all stand in front of the stone slab door. Uh it's again slightly ajar, but uh Sarah tries to pull it open and it seems like it's she's unable to fully muscle it open okay i i try to assist her to, to help open it wonderful if you could please go ahead and roll me your strength check 13 okay all right so uh you see uh shepherd step forward as well with her she uh steals herself down hunkers down getting a good grip on the door and as well with Shepard, also uh, getting uh, on the other side of her, basically ready to push the door as she pulls. 
and uh, as uh, as they start to muscle it, you hear the grinding of stone as this door is worked open. It takes them a little bit because you hear the the struggle that they grit in their teeth. You hear how this door is struggling to open, but eventually the door does open enough to where you believe all of you could squeeze through. All right, I've opened the door. My job is done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going home. Or I walk in. Okay. Yeah, I, I squeeze through, at, but after everyone else. Right. You, uh, as you step forward through the door, uh, the light of the torch begins to cascade across the floor, and you do see that there is just numerous skeletal remains just sporadically scattered throughout this the, the floor of this tomb. W- on that, is there a way I can, like, inspect? Is it just perception to, like, look for traps or something? Oh, See absolutely. if I can notice anything? Yes, please, roll me a perception. Oh, oh that no. is a, that is a single digit. That is the no. lowest of single digits. Do, do, do I swallow cobwebs also? <laughs> <laughs> you choke on a bone. Man, we are. That is not a good one. Of, um, one of the cobwebs that's stuck in my hair floats off right into his mouth. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 just secondhand cobwebbing at this point. <laughs> Gross. Uh, yeah. Mm. No, you 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 do have a no idea basically what you're kind of looking at right now you're yeah. kind of uh your your vision is very much obscured by another web <laughs> <laughs> well this looks safe <laughs> sarah herself at this point seems a little apprehensive but uh, albeit nervous uh and uh remarks that i i must admit while i am familiar with this tomb i myself have never ventured down here where we go next <laughs> is anyone's guess are we still just trying to find who else is down there yeah at this point you know that there is uh basically deduced last time that there are other people in here and y'all believe it to be the um the grave robbers is what y'all believed it to be okay but we also saw like claw marks and stuff on those yes you did you you believed them to be wolf bites on Mm. their um on their bodies Okay, so in, in what way can we proceed from here? Like So in this in this open room, it's about a twenty by twenty room, and there are uh two additional doors. Uh one from the far end, opposite end of where y'all are standing now, and then one directly to your left. The other wall is a it looks like it would have been an area for a makeshift church. You see a couple of dilapidated pews. Uh, they've they've all since rotted and or have collapsed, and you see an altar that is very much broken. Um, the stone working is uh, crumbled away, and tapestry that is long since uh, it's basically all mothballs at this point. But it's it's tapestries that are barely hanging from what looks like wrought iron curtain rods that are rusted, gross, covered in cobwebs. And this is the room that we're in now. Current, the current room that you're in, yes. What kind of church would they hide underground like this? Sarah would uh, look over and remark that these uh, these are where last rites were performed. Do the, knows a lot. Are, are the torches lit on like in, in a direction where it's like okay, torches are on the left side, but there's no torch lit on the right side, so it's like we can see a path or. No other torch lighted okay. uh, aside from what you guys are carrying. Just your two torches. This room was completely dark. Mm, okay. Okay. I walk over to the door on the left side and and put my ear to the door to see if I can hear anything um, on the other side. So it is a large wooden door uh, with some sort of wrought iron workings across it and bandings. Um, you place your ear up to it and please roll me your perception check. Did you roll another single digit? Yeah. All right, guys. A, so here's let me just stop real quick. One. This is so, D&D. We want high numbers. We want uh, high numbers. Uh, are we rolling a total of six? Uh, you get a total of six? Yeah. Nothing that you can decipher. Hmm. Sounds like wood. Can I Can I go like l- try to listen also? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, by all s- means. Let me see if I can roll double digits. Hey. Yeah, 18. Plus my four for perception. So 22. 22. Very good. Um, you hear... Uh, it sounds like there is a sound of rushing wind kind of surprises you. Cause you would have thought that this is all just very much stale air down here. Uh, very stagnant, but no, you, you do hear the sound of airflow. 
Mm. Guys, I think I hear some wind or something behind this door. It sounds really open. We should steer clear of wind. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not break wind. <laughs> Too uh, late. I'm curious if, if this uh, area that we're at, which is as old and dilapidated as described, if we can see any dusty footprints that have been imprinted Ooh. to showcase if anyone has actually walked in and around the area recently. Roll me a perception check, please. 14 plus 4, 18. Yes. Uh, the, not the door that you're currently at, but the other door from the opposite end of the one that y'all came in. There seems to be a slight clearing, and you do see these streak marks that the door has left in the ground of uh, basically imprinting on the dust that there, that one was the most recent one in use. Gentlemen, Lady Sarah, shall we proceed to return back in the door that we came through? Sarah looks over at the door that you were, I, I'm assuming, motioning towards, but um, she, she says, if that's the direction they're in, then we must make haste and follow them. All right, your call. I'm with you guys. All right. Make your way over to the door. Uh, marching or anybody else going to open the door besides Sarah or anybody wanting to? Yeah, I'll open it. I'm, that's the one thing I've been good at <laughs> so far. The blind people. <laughs> like, I'm only good at opening cobwebs doors. cobwebs in their face. <laughs> I can't tell you what's beyond it, but I can open it. <laughs> Crit fail if you don't on see it, open. it's not there. <laughs> I can open the hell out of that door. <laughs> oh my god, yes. All right, so I'm 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 door opening right now. Chris, you reach for the door, and as you uh, pull the handle to open it, uh, you immediately hear the clanking of what sounds like coins hitting coins hitting the floor. Oh, ah, someone's got some uh, some cash money on the other side. Uh, let's let's definitely get in there. You swing the door open, and Chris does a 19 beat your armor class. Yep. <laughs> yes, it does. You take four points of damage as a crossbow that was uh, hooked up to a mechanism shoots forward and lands directly in your thigh, dealing four damage. Ouch. Okay, that's going to sting. Can we see if this was a booby trap or if this was actual mm -hmm. someone? Yeah, you, know. you see that the uh, it looked like copper coins were left on the door handle on the other side. They were used to, if obviously someone opened the door to the door handle, that the coins would fall down. And then they put a makeshift little mechanism on there to whoever opened the door was going to get a nasty crossbow bolt shot at them. Yeah, this was most assuredly a trap. Oh, fantastic. All right. So I, uh, I, I pulled the bolt out of my leg did you say it hit me in the leg yes directly in the thigh okay. uh, and, and then i i shove the the torch up against the wound a little bit and cauterize it oh yeah <laughs> that's good stuff i'm at least going to take these coins um and i pick up whatever coins fell from the door you have five copper <laughs> <laughs> worth was it, it worth it <laughs> Oh, ask me once I use it to buy a nail. So with that, uh, Sarah will look at your wound and especially what you try to do with your torch and say, uh, that's disgusting. Uh, let me take a quick look at it. And she will, you see, she pulls out a small healing kit from her pouch. Mm. So we're doing it that way. Eh? This is kind of her job at the church. And she will heal you for three of those four uh, points of damage. Um, you know, I normally wouldn't thank someone of your ilk, but, uh, well done, I suppose. <laughs> Jeez, I can't very well having you die before we even encounter these brigands. With that oh, limp of yours, are you going to be in our way? <laughs> <laughs> it'll, uh, it'll take a lot more than a fancy cross bolts and copper coins to kill me. So, uh, with that, you do see, uh, into this chamber, um, this... Uh, this room leads to a, a lengthy hallway. It's about 15 feet wide and about 30 feet long. Um, across it, you see three doors on either side. So there's a total of six doors. And at the very end of the hallway, there is a fairly large spiral, spiral staircase opening heading downward. 
All right. Um, I had my share of going first. I'll I'll give someone else a shot. I I, I mean I, I'm afraid to do another perception check with how bad they've been so far. Well, actually, my last <laughs> one went bad, but like um. Can I just make sure that it's not trapped on the way down, like, uh, of the staircase? Uh, just... Yeah, you'd have to, um, uh, you can perception, but you'll have to, like, move further into the room yeah, yeah. as you start to inspect. Okay, let me do that, just because I saw him just get shot by a crossbow, <laughs> and I'm a little concerned now. So, yeah, okay. perception. And I'll move forward some. Uh, plus... Are you, still, are you still stealthing? I'm assuming... I'm trying to, yeah, trying, yeah, as best I can. Gotcha. Uh, you start moving forward in the hallway. You do not see any traps. However, you do see that there is a couple of um, uh, pockets of supplies that are put down here. You see a couple of large barrels of some sort of uh, fluid inside as you kind of move up next to it. And a, uh, about two crates that you start uh, getting close to to inspect. As you are by the crate, however... You do hear a very muffled. Well, shit! I think I heard the coins. Okay, hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna just like back up it, guys. Guys, I hear somebody. You hear the door open. Torchlight fills the room as three men quickly exit uh, one of the doors, and you see them start looking around immediately. Well, they don't notice uh, Jack at all. They, you are very, you are st- still very much hidden. They look right past you, like you're still hiding, like un- like next to one of the crates. Yeah, like, like crouched down, kind mm-hmm. of. Okay. However, they do turn and lock eyes with the other three of you, uh, Sarah, Shepard, and Avador. With that, no oh boy, here it comes. They look at you. They look at the three of you. Oh no, the Ecclesia is here. Get them. So let's roll initiative. Plus one, 17. 16. God damn it, two. <laughs> a gentleman's two, as I refer to them. <laughs> oh, I took one of those earlier. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> All right, so with that, we are going to start off. Shepard, you are up first. All right. Um, I drop the torch I was holding in my offhand and don my hand crossbow. And uh, is there one that's closer than the other? Like, what kind of formation are they in? Uh, they are pretty much standing side by side, just one slightly behind the rest. Currently, from where you're at, they're about 15 feet away. Because y'all are still at the entrance of it. They're yeah. halfway yeah. through. Okay. Um, and the uh, Jack is the one who is right next to them, hiding behind one of the uh, crates. Uh, which one of them shouted the orders to to get us? Like which one? The one who's uh, a little bit deeper into the hallway. All right, so I'm gonna aim my my hand crossbow at him and let loose a bo- uh, a bolt. Um, uh, so I rolled a twelve. That is a hit. Uh, six total. The bolt lands squaw into his shoulder, and he does not like that feeling whatsoever. Yeah, how does that feel? It doesn't feel great. Well, I didn't okay. like it either. Uh, Shepard, you still have a move action if you would like. Do you? Oh, wait, no, you drew your you drew your crossbow. Yeah, yeah. got it. Okay, very good. So that is your turn. We move to Jack. Okay, are there free actions where I can like look in the room they just came from? Am I behind them or you're? Uh, it is slightly in front of them. So, okay, never mind then. Um, I guess. Can I try to like stealth my way behind them because I am uncomfortably close and I don't want to yeah. like uh, like just jump out and stab in the <laughs> leg or something. So let me try to like make my way behind sure. them if I can. Yeah, you can use your move to stealth half your speed. Okay, and that would still be a stealth roll. Yes. Right. Okay. Oh. Um. <laughs> ten total. Ten. Yeah. So they're oh, probably gonna see me. Me. Let's see how. They- okay. All right. Um. Well. Uh, while that 10 may have been very low for a stealth roll, they rolled even lower for their perception, so <laughs> you go unnoticed past them. They like stubbed your toe and barely yeah. like, like I'm, oh. I'm knocking boxes over, but one of them's worried wow. about getting shot in the yeah. shoulder, so they have bigger things to worry about. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm behind them now. Um, can I... Are there like back stabs or anything it's not so much a backstab so essentially if an enemy is unaware of you Mm -hmm. then you have advantage on attacking them and you being a rogue anytime you have advantage 
uh, if you are to hit, you get to apply your sneak attack dice to the damage. Mm. Anytime you add advantage. Sneak attack. Sneak attack. Oh, yeah, there it is for sure. Okay, then I, I, I will attack the one who was just shot. Oh, very good. Just to try to like take down the weakened sure. prey. Kick him while he's down. Which I'm assuming you're using a dagger as the tiny child that you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Use my dagger. So that is, uh, so that's the hit yeah, bonus? It, okay. Yeah, it's your two hit bonus. 18. Plus five. Good so. lord. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you hit. You're yes. good. You hit him. Uh, Jack leaps up from behind, uh, kind of slightly jumping on his back and burying his knife in the guy's shoulder, dealing. And it's an extra 1d6 on top of whatever, on top of this 1d4. Yeah, you do your 1d4 plus your dexterity modifier plus your uh, d6 of snick attack. Because he was unaware of you. Oh, so 7 plus. Oh, God. 7 plus 6, so 13 damage? Yeah, you stab him directly in the jugular. (laughs) Um, your, Your knife stab, you immediately feel this like warm sensation on your hands as you can tell like the blood is spurting from his neck onto you and a bit on your face because that was a real big hit so i like snuck behind those box then like kind of leapt off of one mm-hmm. of them and stabbed him in the throat yeah from behind yeah yeah <laughs> that'd be pretty scary that was real metal as hell <laughs> <laughs> um i uh, uh my 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 guy says oh what would be the uh, equivalent of like a, a a Jesus Christ kind of statement in this world. By the nine. Okay. Uh, by the nine, which I don't really believe in, but by them. <laughs> and I'm just sleeping there like, ha <laughs> Yeah, little tiny war cry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, next up is the bandits. They, uh, they're they going to turn and look at the tiny child who just killed uh, one of their friends, and they're not exactly keen on that, so... Uh, yeah. You're getting some attacks. I figured, okay. <laughs> All right, bandit number one. He is wielding a scimitar in one hand and a torch in the other, so he's going to try to stab at you with that skimtar. Does a 10 beat your armor class? Nope. He swings wildly, and you manage to step out of the way. The other one rolls a six, so he as well tries to jab forward with the sword, and you lunge I'm just, directly. I'm just up. dodging yeah, and weaving. You are... Bobbing and weaving right now. Bobbing and weaving, yeah. (laughs) All right. uh, Next up is Sarah. Sarah is going to run forward, realizing that a child is in peril. (laughs) Am I? Because I I just killed a man. (laughs) Am I? I think I'm okay. Um, Sarah runs forward, wielding her mace, and she uh, she screams as she runs. Nine, damn you to hell! And she swings her mace. Rolling a natural 20. Oh, I'm glad that was her, not the bandits. Um, just so everyone is aware, I do my um, my natural 20s a little differently, and I'll go ahead and explain it now. You normally would do double damage or essentially two dies worth of damage. However, if I, I like to make sure that these are still critical hits, so I do max damage plus another die roll. Okay. Mm. So in this case, uh, she's going to get to roll her damage for the mace plus her strength, and then uh, she'll just add whatever the max damage would have been to that. Does that make sense? I mean, I like that actually because yeah. yes. then it's not like oh, I rolled two ones. Correct. Here's yeah. my awesome crit hit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great! I rolled the critical hit and I scratched your ankle. <laughs> All right. Paper cut. Yeah. yeah. I gave you a wicked paper cut critically. <laughs> Wait to wash your hands. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna really suck if you eat something with lemons. <laughs> you hear the sound of what uh, what would sound like a bat hitting a watermelon as oh. she. Um, clocks this one guy across the side of the head and he drops very quickly is that part of the uh sermons of the church i've never quite <laughs> seen a, never seen a, a lady of the cloth uh quite handle herself <laughs> like that uh, and then we go to our next character avador i believe with uh one man completely dead yes <laughs> the other man uh, he's not quite dead. Oh, he's dead. 
Oh, uh, the other oh, one? They're, they're both. There's two dead. There's one guy left who has still got his gaze upon um, Jack right now because he was trying to stab him. Yeah, one of them had their head smashed like a watermelon. The other one, pretty sure. Got I... shot in the shoulder and then stabbed in the neck. <laughs> yeah. These guys are not having a good day. There's one left. Cool. I don't want to kill him. I want to know what his intentions are. So I will. I have my javelin. Ooh. So from my distance, which I am also oh, 15. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're also at 15. My baby you're gonna hug, javelin. You're going to huck that bitch? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to huck it and huck just it, chuck it. pierce him just enough Flip. so he can oh. still talk. Right. And I roll. No! <laughs> oh, no. Jack, get out of the way! Oh, no. It's going to hit oh, you! No. It's going to hit you! All right. I well, rolled a one. Okay. So, um, again, in my games, this is like, what a great learning session that we're all having, huh? Um, so, with a critical miss of a ranged attack with somebody who is engaged in melee, uh-huh. um, <laughs> should die. please have Avador roll that attack once more. All right. Ten. Okay, now go ahead and total up what the attack would have been. So, it's your uh, proficiency bonus plus your dexterity. So two zero twelve. Does twelve beat Jack's armor class? It does not. Okay, Jack, you see a wild javelin fly. <laughs> the guy easily dodges out of the way, and you as well manage to matrix style bend backwards, <laughs> and the uh, the the javelin flies past. You hear it clang to the to the ground, but. Um, I'm okay. Behind. It's next to you now. Use it. <laughs> yeah. It's for you. Use, use, it, use it. it. Catch it. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks. <laughs> um, and with that, that is the end of round one. We go now to the top of the round with Shepard. So I, I show very clearly that I have a crossbow in one hand and the and a, uh, rip my rapier in the other. And I look at the guy and I'm like, now would be a good time to talk. And and uh, hoping to intimidate him to to give us up some information. Okay, go ahead and roll me that intimidation. Okay, uh, let's see. That's fourteen plus three, seventeen. Uh, he seems resistant to your intimidation. He looks at the rest of you and uh, turns his gaze over to Sarah, who he is going to look like he is going to strike next. So that is, uh, unfortunately, ineffective. Do you have anything else you would like to do? You still have a standard action. Um, I'm sorry, a move action. You have a move action still. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm going to try to position myself between him and Jack really quick. Okay, you move forward and you uh, get yourself next to Sarah, who is also positioned next to this guy. Got it. All right, Jack, you are up. Okay, like, I, I don't want to, like, murder this guy in the same way I just did. Mm. I don't know my own strength, so <laughs> I'll go and get, I'll go and actually pick up the spear. Is it, like, within range I can go grab it? Uh, yeah, you'd getting? be able to move to the end of the hallway. That's your move action, and to pick it up would be your standard action. How far away would I be, then, from the action? 15 feet. 15 feet. Okay, let me try to get it and also throw it at the guy oh, to God. see if I can do better. <laughs> do it! Since I don't know if I'll hit him, like I don't think he'll get murdered. I hope I don't murder him accidentally with this, but <laughs> we'll see. Get him I, in the I, I, I know I, I have no like means of like threatening him. I'm just a kid, so. <laughs> well, you did. Uh, you you are covered in blood from stabbing his friend. <laughs> yeah, true. You know what? I'll, I'll try to intimidate him. Let me try. That, that'll be funny. Roll your intimidate. That'll be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I killed your friend in front of you. Oh, let's see. Uh, nine. I'm pretty that sure you throw and it, it it sticks into the wall, but you miss. No, no, no. no, no, no. He this was is doing me trying to intimidate. Oh, nine. He oh, I'm sorry. The intimidate. My 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 yeah. fault. My fault. Yeah, yeah. I, I changed my uh, mind. Oh yeah, he easily is just like, oh no, no, <laughs> so, no. <laughs> no. You sure? He's like, that's adorable, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I did to your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Behold the blood of mine enemies. <laughs> <laughs> he's just not. He's just like holding my head back with his hand. Like, no. like, You're just no, no, no. yapping chihuahua like, at quiet. this point. Yeah. <laughs> Hush, child. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's now his turn, and as mentioned before, he's going to turn his ire towards Sarah, and he is going to try to bury his scimitar in her face. Sarah, get your mace out of that other head. All right, and. He he Mace successfully hits. No. And he successfully hits and deals. Uh, it's cocked dice. 
Uh, he strikes her across the arm, but only slightly. Uh, her breastplate absorbs the rest of the damage, so she's only taking a little bit of damage. And then it's her turn, and she looks at him with a real pissed off look on her face. All right, so she gives out her very loud, boisterous Brienne of Tarth war cry <laughs> and uh, strikes that guy square in the shoulder. And you, in fact, hear some cracking bones uh, as she, it looks like she broke his arm just now with her mace. But he is still alive. He is still alive. Okay. And Avador, you are up next. How down is he? Uh... I cannot describe the number of hit points. However, um, something that I still use from an older iteration of D&D is if you get past half hit points, you are considered bloodied. Nice. Which is basically a very physical uh, uh, telling that you are below half HP. People can tell if you're bloodied or not. Like, ooh, you're not doing so hot. This guy is definitely not doing so well. Okay. So I would like to run at him with my club and then just kind of hit him in the gut. Let's give him a swing. Four. Ooh, that's a hit. Plus whatever your weapon uh hit slash DC is. Fifteen. Fifteen to hit? Yes. Fifteen to hit is indeed a wallop of a hit. So you may now roll your damage. I don't know what the damage of a club is. I think it's like a D6. Damage one four D4. Oh, a D4. And do you have bludgeoning damage to add? That's the little pyramid. Oh, there we are. Yeah, do you have a strength mod? I don't think That's you a have four. a strength modifier, do you? Is there a plus to it? Uh, No, it's a minus one. Oh, oh. minus one. One D4, minus one. So she rolled so three. Three, yeah. Okay. Ooh, okay. Uh, yeah, he is, he is hanging on, but barely. Uh, between his broken arm, and he's now got a really bloody nose from a club to the face. Um... He's not he's not faring so well. It is now to the top of the round again with Shepard. I say, all right, I've had enough of this. And I uh, um, walk forward and uh, go to slash him with the rapier and finish him off. That is uh, actually I should also tell you this because there are other people attacking him. Mm -hmm. Anytime you are attacking a foe and you are adjacent to an ally, you get advantage. Oh, nice. Mm. Um, well, I rolled really well, so I got 19 plus my, uh, so my hit would be plus four, so 23. Uh, you hit him, your minimum damage would, will kill him. Okay, um, yeah, that would be a, a D8 plus four, so, um. Yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, at this point, uh, he's, he's bleeding from the mouth and he's trying to write himself up. Shepard walks up directly behind him, grabbing, uh, reaching around to grab him uh, from the front with one arm and r runs the, the rapier straight through him, through his belly, and he drops to the ground, lifeless. I did warn you. I wipe the, the blood off my rapier on his clothes. There is three dead bandits there at your feet, guys. Well done. Yay? <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Well, can, can I go look in the room, just kind of peek in the room they came from to make sure, well, A, there's nobody else mm -hmm. in there, and B, just what the lay of it is? Indeed. Uh, you peek inside the room to where you see that there is um, a small brazier, uh, very barely lit with just some coals, uh, some hot coals and whatnot, just to keep them warm. And you see uh, six bedrolls uh, unfurled out, as well as a tiny spit over that brazier, where they've got some uh, salted fish that they're heating up right now. Mm. Um, a couple of knapsacks and one foot locker. Is anybody hungry? <laughs> <laughs> I can also, eat. also, let me, uh, I don't know how you want to do looting in this, but can I like search bodies for just like, oh, absolutely. Quick, like once over? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Going through the bodies, you see that they had... Shepard is eyeing Jack suspiciously because he's still a little freaked out by all the stuff he saw earlier. <laughs> um so uh Jack you managed to find they were all they all had scimitars so you find three scimitars they all had light crossbows as well um each with a full quiver Can I grab a few of these crossbow bolts You may indeed yes Okay I'm just going to take one quiver full I'll hold on to another one I don't use crossbow bolts so just in case you need it later 
Is there anything special about these uh, scimitars? Do they look fancy or? Do oh they- hell no! These are garbage swords. Okay. These are all just you. You, you can tell that these guys um, were probably the low ranking of the rank and file. Uh, the swords are not very well kept. Uh, some look to be like they're pretty dull or worn. Um, yeah, it's uh, not did, great. Did you say there was any currency on them? There is. Each one had a tiny pouch on their person with five gold. Let's see. Uh, so there's uh, four of us, gold. and one of us doesn't really count. And three pouches. <laughs> So I say we could we could all take at least a pouch and Sarah, you have no need for money. You your currency is the church, right? <laughs> you see her. She closes her eyes and she takes a deep breath and she says, "Part of your stipulations for doing this was that you got to keep the spoils for what you did, keep the tomb safe. So yes, yes. by all means, keep your coins." I appreciate that reminder. <clears throat> all right, uh, so I will claim one pouch of gold. <laughs> <laughs> reminder <laughs> you appreciate that she reminded yeah does the fish look done enough to eat because i'm probably pretty hungry it's salted herring it's already pretty much dried out to oblivion it's just to warm it up it looks pretty good okay i'm I just going i grab a bite you guys just <laughs> pull one off the spit bite. yeah jack pulls one off the spit and Emily just starts kind of tearing into it uh, with a- after every bite, taking a little bit of time to pick the bones out of his teeth, and yeah, I- I'm street trash. I'm not. Oh, dude, to yeah, any of this. <laughs> no, this, yeah. yeah, this is delicious for you. You're yeah. like, oh, thank God, salt fish. Oh, <laughs> num 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 yeah. num num num. <laughs> after reviewing their quarters and their belongings, can we safely assume that they are not the grave robbers? That they are probably just slumming it, or if you uh, did y'all look into the other belongings that they had what all did in the i said there was a couple no. of different knapsacks as well as the footlocker we haven't looked oh, at yeah. it um is the footlocker locked it is can i try to lock pick it via thieves tools you can indeed uh the thieves tools will get you uh, a double proficiency bonus in there Ooh, that's good yeah 16 plus three for dex bonus absolutely so 19 oh and then does it double with the thieves tool so that's mm-hmm. plus six instead? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so twenty two. Yeah. So you make very quick work of this uh very simple lock. Uh pop it open and the foot locker is now able to be accessed. Flip that bad boy open and you see that there is a larger sack of currency in there. Mm. Mm. How large are we talking? Uh you see about um Two hundred copper and one hundred silver inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, additionally, you do see that there is a couple of pieces of parchment, um, and there is also um, a, a s- small pieces of a leather uh, leather armor set. So, like you see some like leather greaves, some leather bracers, uh, but uh, not like the full set. Well, um, kid, since you opened that, uh, you can take whatever my share might be. Uh, let's keep in mind, though, we see six bedrolls here, and we've only killed three. There's at least three more down here somewhere. Yeah, that's a good point. we got to be careful. Sarah, with a side eye towards you, Jack, says, uh, You're holding yourself very well down here. I doubt that we should be careful. I believe they should be careful of you. She kind of gives you a little shot in the arm for it. <laughs> um, Are you flirting with a child? Is that the <laughs> <laughs> And she immediately rolls her eyes at you. Uh, I always knew it, that's what the church has come to. <laughs> but I am blushing. So back in the, the room preceding this one, was there any other doors aside from the one we came through? There was three on either side. Y'all went through the middle one on the right side. Okay. Um, so should we And check then there out, was the stairway at the end. Should we check out that um, other door, the stairway, a thing? Let's, let's do a thing. Lead the way. <laughs> Okay, uh, if I have to. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up to uh, one of the other doors. All right, so you had three on the left okay. and two on the right that are unopened. Which one would you like to go to? Um, I'm gonna head to one of the doors on the right. Okay, was it the one that's furthest down the hall, or the one closest to the door y'all came? I'll in? go through the the one furthest down the hall. Closest furthest to the stairway. Yes, yeah. that would be closest to the stairwell. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. You see a simple wooden door, little bits of iron bandings on it. Okay. And it is that one. 
that door is that door is unlocked. Okay. Is that is the door? So so I grab the handle, and I try to open a little bit. Is that opening inward or outward, like towards me? Towards you. Okay. So I'm going to open it, but I'm going to stay behind that door as I open and walk backwards with the door <laughs> so that if anything comes out of there, the door is shielding me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's what I'm doing. All right. Uh, in the hard way. And just do this real quick. <laughs> okay. Uh, nothing really happens. Uh, you, uh, you peer through and see that there, this is uh, kind of where they're storing their food. Um, oh, yeah. It looks like it was a vestments closet where you would see like lots of the holy robes and holy uh, uh, vestments that some of the clerics used to wear. Uh, but they're all gone at this point or worn down or tattered. And they're keeping uh, some crates, sacks and barrels in here of foodstuffs. So you see like grains and some iron rations and, and the like. Okay. Well, I'm on a diet. I, I'm trying to. I'm low carb. I'm going <laughs> to skip these grains. Doing that paleo diet. I'm skipping the grains for now. Shall we try another door? Who who has an idea of where to go? Yeah, I'll, I'll just go and test the other door just to see if it's locked or open. But I'm going to do the same thing as if I open it and it's a toward me thing. So the door on the right? Uh, yeah, because you said there was three doors? Yeah, three doors on either side. So you're going to check the last remaining right door? Yes, I'll check the right one. Okay. That one is uh, also unlocked. But, yeah, opening it cautiously. Towards you, cautiously? Yes. Okay. Keep in mind, you are also a rogue. You can do a perception to check for traps. I know how that went last time, but I'll try again. <laughs> Twelve. Okay. Nothing Nothing that you see. <laughs> that I see. Okay. Got it. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I'm cautiously opening the door. I have to be an impartial DM here and be <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, I know. I appreciate it. I don't know. It. I mean, you know. But I'm also concerned. Okay. So, <laughs> All right. Door's um, open. You uh, pull the door open. Uh, this one as well is just pretty much a storage room of some kind. Pretty empty. Nothing really happening in here. Uh, just some minor uh, items of n- not really anything noteworthy. A couple of brooms. You see like some spools of rope. Um, you see a couple of uh, poles. And there's also like a couple of empty knapsacks. Okay. Uh, it looks like nothing much in here. Who's next? Okay. We are definitely... Striking out here. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I and the and the child are obviously not good at choosing doors. Avador, uh, would you like to choose a door for us? I'll choose the door closest to the spiral staircase on the left. Okay. You head over to that door, and that one is locked. Hmm. I've got tools for this. <laughs> All right, let me get over there and start working my magic. This is something I really enjoy. Like, this is my favorite part of being a thief, like just at, in character. So I'm excited about it. Like uh, I, I run over there. As you jauntily run over there and start working on the door, uh, Sarah again tilts her head a bit and says, child, where did you get those tools? <laughs> I acquired them, honestly. <laughs> All right, let me, she, let me roll. She this. rubs her head a little bit and is like, I just have to look the other way. Just look the other way. All right. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I open it. 19 plus 6, so 25. Good Lord. Yeah, yeah. You make very quick work of this door. Since he opened the door for me right away, how dark is this room? Uh, The door creaks open. Incredibly dark. I have a dark vision of 60 Oh, no, you're good then, yeah. So I can see what... What do uh, I see? This, uh, you see a, uh, essentially, it looks like a caged room of some kind. Mm. There's a small five foot, almost pathway that you're standing right in front of where the door opens. And then there's a set of iron rot bars and a gate that looks like uh, it has a, a, a large holding cell on the other side. Can I make out a figure if anyone is trapped in that cage? Nope. It's empty. Hmm. So, two doors left, I believe. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, I'm going to go... Uh, I'll go open... Attempt to open the door next to this one. That one is uh, not locked. However, the door is stuck. Yeah, I'm going to try to slam into it and see if I can open this thing. All right. You will need a successful strength check to try to uh, muscle this madness open. Okay. Oh, God. All right. Well, that's a critical fail. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh, Chris, I just knocked dude. myself out, um, basically. All right. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know what dice you're using. Get rid of it. <laughs> Get rid of that dice mm-hmm. and use another one. Are those the dice I got you? Yeah, thanks. I'm so sorry. That is a, oh, that I'm is so a sorry. shit <laughs> gift. I'm so sorry, Chris. <laughs> Get rid of it. My okay. heart was in the right place. <laughs> All right, yeah, you uh, thrust your shoulder against the door, and it does not even begin to budge. It doesn't budge, but since it's a simple wooden door, old, most likely falling apart, can he, was he able to get through Mm -mm, with his weight? Nope, nope, nope. nope. Not with Uh, that. Not with that. Is it a case of like I slammed into it, but it opens outward? <laughs> <laughs> it's a pull, not a push. Well, yeah, we we all, y'all all knew that these were pulls, so I mean, like, yeah, you tried to like wrench it open, okay. but it didn't. It it just didn't budge. Got it. Um, someone else is willing is more than welcome to try, or Sarah can try for you. So yeah, yeah. Let's have. I mean, strength wise, she's the next strongest. I would assume, if not yes. the strongest. Yes. So. Sarah will come up to the door, give that bad boy. Yeah. She uh, uh, kind of rubs her hands together and <sighs> grabs onto the door, and you hear it creaking with the hinges. Just you can hear the hinges are ancient, but it wrenches open. I loosened that. I, I did loosen that for you. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even give you a, a look, but you just hear her say, "I'm sure you did." Uh, you're welcome. And this one is a simple, empty room, ten by ten. We are not Nothing. good at exploring, um, I fear. How many we, how one, many doors are left? One more. One more All right. Uh, first, real quick, I I, I I I look to see if there's any kind of markings or or if it looks like there's been any footprints in this door in this room whatsoever. Please make me a perception check. Okay. You knew how hard it was to open that shit. That is fourteen. You don't notice anything. All right. Can I double up on that perception check? By all means. Yeah, by all means. Uh, 24. Jack, uh, as... Uh, Sorry, 23. 23. Yeah. Shepard seems to walk through, takes a quick gander at the room, just looking around, shrugs his shoulders and walks out. But as he walks out, Jack comes in as well, starts looking through, and he's paying a little bit more attention to some, some, of, the, to some of the subtleties. Like he goes up to one of the bricks in the wall and he puts his ear up to it, knocks against it, and... Feels that there's a loose brick in the wall. It's jiggling, like really loose. Is it? Is it like uh, outward enough where I could like grab it and pull it out? You think so? All right, uh, let me try. You pull the brick out. But, but hold on, let me be like, guy. Everybody, stand back for a second. Like I don't know. What this, <laughs> I don't know what this is gonna do. <laughs> Which wall is it? Is it facing that? Oh, the dungeon uh, yeah, room? yeah, facing room? facing the door. The door. I I, uh, <laughs> I ready my shield just in case. I'm putting away my crossbow. I'm pulling this brick out, but I'm also kind of down by the wall, like doing it, like stretched out as far as I can. So I'm as far away from this part of the wall as possible while doing so. So I'm just kind of like mm-hmm. down here, jingaing it. Yeah, <laughs> Jing- Jing- jinging that thing yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, you pulled out, the whole thing collapses. You lose. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Jinga. Jinga. <laughs> uh, you pull the brick out, and that's it. You, Nothing. uh, uh, take a gander inside, and there's a small box. Ooh. It's just a tiny box, like mm-hmm. where the brick was. Okay, mm-hmm. let me grab that. Okay. Also cautiously. <laughs> <laughs> also cautiously. Also cautiously. Uh, the box is looks like it is of very fine quality. Um, the box itself has these sort of jade inlays into the hinges of like looks. It looks like a very tiny chest. Um, Jaden lays into the to the hinges, into the banding across it, and the keyhole itself seems to be of a very fancy design. Mm. Let me <laughs> pop it open. It's a tiny box, right? Yes, it's very tiny. Okay. Very teeny tiny. Let me, like, delicately <laughs> pop it open. Locked. Oh. Well, I have the tools for this. <laughs> well, let me try again. Okay. Oh, not as good. Uh, Ten. No. Oh. No. You start to work it, and like one of the little tiny um, saws that you have for like going into locks actually kind of like snaps and breaks, and you're like, "Oh shit!" Oh, yeah, unsuccessfully. Mm. Is there any as cute and adorable and as jeweled as this case may be? Is there any cool design on there that might be any words or 
something that I could decipher its origin? There is uh, no uh, markings, or at least as far as words or anything on it, but there is, um, uh, it does appear to have a certain make about it. If you would like, you can roll a history check on it. Seven. You don't know. Fancy looking box, though. <laughs> don't know. It's fancy looking. It looks old. What a fancy box. It must belong to grandma. Can I roll an arcana check to see if there's anything magical about this box? By all means. Okay. Uh, so, 23. Yes. You <laughs> feel like there is, um, looking at it, those fancy inlays of the jade are not just there for show. Those look to be triggers. All right. There is something magical about this box. Um, a, a little voice in my head tells me there may be triggers. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know what that would mean but it doesn't sound super safe so Jack if you would like to hang on to this for a while um, <laughs> yeah I, I, I'm not sure I can even open it uh, I mean I busted one of my little saws so <clears throat> actually I would like to offer my assistance in, in trying to open it with magic uh, yes devil? It, well, it depends. What spell do you plan on using to try to open said box? Well, let's see. I mean, all I have is that I can detect magic, but I think with the Arcana, we're already detecting that alone, right? So, uh, well, you it, it, with his Arcana check, he was able to decipher that there is some sort of magical nature to the box. Okay, detect magic would allow you to actually figure out what the full nature of the magic is on the box so in my detect magic i can um, use the action to see a faint or around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic and learn its school of magic correct so by learning its school of magic of its object mm -hmm. will i be able to then open it probably not open it but you can at least tell what the magical nature is on on the box like what 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 sort of magic is being used on it okay i will Use my detect magic. Okay. You hand the box over to Avador and she holds it in front of her. Uh, for a moment, you see that her eyes actually take on a sort of light blue tint as she begins to observe it. Looking at the box, Avador, you see that uh, there is a uh, fairly strong evocation spell uh, surrounding the box in some way. You think that this might be magically trapped. Hmm. So if there's a trap to it, that sounds like not something I would like to try to open. Maybe we could just try to break it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like we have the, a sledgehammer we can just bash this bitch open uh, with? Uh, I, I Sarah, feel like you have a large uh, mace. See if you can break this thing. It feels like we're all kind of like uh, sitting, standing around it like little like cavemen, just like <laughs> right. scratching Ooh. our heads. <laughs> the files are in the computer. <laughs> the files are in the computer. In. Um... Uh, Sarah very much scoffs at that. Is like, I am in no way going to smash whatever sort of relic this is. This is right well beyond my scope of understanding. Then if it's not keeping us from moving forward, uh, let me just hold on to it. We'll, we'll save it for later because, like, I'm I'm afraid to try to keep opening it right now. Right. I don't think right now we should open it. <clears throat> whatever magic is used to enclose what's in it. The fact that they didn't trust that the magic was strong enough that they had to hide it in an enclosed room behind a brick would probably make you question that it's a lot more dangerous than we think it is. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I'm all for waiting on this one. Maybe we can find an answer within <laughs> the, the corridors more. Like, let's let's hold off. You know, and maybe we could find some other poor sap to try to open it for us so that he gets the full brunt of... Whatever's trapping uh, what's inside. Could be a dark spirit that's going to ruin the entire world in this tiny itty bitty box. Worth it. But who knows? Worth it. <laughs> Does he have riches though? No, with that said, there's only one more door, and that seems as good as place of as any to start. Um so I'm gonna head out and I'm gonna head over to the very last door and try to try to open that sucker. Alright, the last one. Uh, as you try to open the door, it actually just collapses in. It is that old. Oops. Um, <laughs> wasn't. Oops. I, I look over at Sarah and I'm like, I found it like this. 
You she, break your back. And she rolls her eyes, but uh, walks over there to look inside with you. This one you see is a room uh, that uh, carries a lot of burial wrappings. It's it's a it's a preparation chamber. It looks to be. Is there so with my dark vision? Um, I guess I can do a perception check in here. I'd like to see if there's anything um, else in there. Anything hidden amongst all the the sure prep stuff? Yeah. Yeah, okay. by all means, please roll a perception. Natural check. twenty. Oh man, Ooh. there it is. Finally, yeah. All right, Chris, you um, uh, Shepherd uh, moves through the room and immediately just starts kind of like throwing some of the wrappings aside. He looks at some of the jars that hold organs and sets them aside. But as you pick up one of the jars, you actually hear some jingle, jingle jangle inside of it, hmm. and you see that this one is not necessarily an organ uh, container, but this is what. Um, this was one of the containers that dwarves would often like to have themselves buried with. And it uh, it uh, sounds like there's some gemstones inside. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, I throw it on the ground and break it. You hear the, 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 you hear the, uh, the ceramic clay uh, 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 container shatter against the floor. And um, a good number of aquamarines and opals just kind of uh, uh, cascade across the ground. Mm. Oh, there we are. That's what we were looking for. I just well, naturally run over there and start kind of scrounging and grabbing, picking up. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I kicked Jack over with one foot, so I can try to <laughs> grab at least one of the aquamar- uh, aquamarines for myself. Perfect. You pick one. Yeah, you, you, I'm, I'm it does not deter one. him for long. He he's like, Ugh, but immediately starts going back to picking stuff up. <laughs> you but think you, I haven't been kicked before? <laughs> <laughs> but you uh, you do immediately. Uh, yeah, but you do pick up one of the aquamarines yourself, and you can tell these are good quality gems. Nice. All right. So I'll, I'll just pocket one of those. I am also pocketing some of these. <laughs> <laughs> really, really <laughs> interesting. None of these have been in the scroll. For the things that we should be looking Mm-mm. for, okay. Mm-mm. No, yeah, this this all of this is just extra for you at this oh, okay. point. All right. Um. So we've opened all of these doors. Where else could we even go at this point? Down the spiral case. Oh, got the spiral boy. staircase at the end of the hall. I have a thing against staircases. I'm not big fans of them. How about uh, uh, Jack? Would you would you care to try to stealth down there and just maybe kill whatever you find? What? You did just you kill kick me. I, I don't know how I feel about this request, but I'll to do be it fair, for you Ruby. got the, most of the gems. I think that's pretty fair payment for, you know, I, going ahead. I think I would do it for, I don't know, one more aquamarine. <laughs> <laughs> Which I mm. happen to see you pick one up, so I think we can make a deal. Uh, sorry, I, uh, <clears throat> I, I lost that one already. Somewhere in my pockets, can't find it. <laughs> Sarah tilts her head back. By the love of the nine, please just scout downward. I reach in his pocket, grab it, and run over there. (laughs) You gonna head down the staircase? Yeah. Okay. Please roll me your stealth check. Remind me to kill that one later. (laughs) So, okay, so it's uh, 13 then. 13? Yeah. Okay. At the bottom of the staircase, as you make your way down, you do see that the the staircase essentially is... um, uh, ends in another antechamber with four corridors heading off in each direction. You do see that there is three of the corridors all just go forward and then fork to their right. However, one corridor looks like it's collapsed. So is everyone else down there with me now? Like, were they following? Yeah, I'm, I'm following down the staircase now. So there's four corridors. Mm-hmm. Which one is collapsed? Uh, if you're uh, with your back to the staircase, it would be the one to your right. Do we want to go like left to right here? Do we want to look at the, uh, the collapsed, collapsed one. one, see what's there? Um, I say we peek at the collapsed one already since we don't have to. Okay. I'll, I'll go run up to the collapsed one just to see if I can notice anything. Perception check. Ugh. Uh, I probably don't notice anything. I have seven. Yeah, it, the rubble. Lots and lots of rubble. <laughs> There's rocks, guys. I see <laughs> rocks. Oh, great. We found rocks. Hearing you remark about that, Sarah remarks as well. The tomb itself has been notoriously uh, rumored that certain individuals uh, at being buried here buried themselves within the walls. Uh, With their burial chambers, they had various items that they were buried with. So it is 
not necessarily out of the realm of possibility that someone would be trying to find one of these random bodies in the walls. Why don't we try the one uh, directly next to that one? I'll sneak ahead a little bit. You go down the corridor and veer off to the right. You see that this one is actually pretty well lit. There's already some torches in the sconces. Um, and you see that there is uh, two doors on either side of the hallway and then one larger door at the end of the hallway. The one at the end of the hallway is not like the simple wooden ones that you've seen. This one is very, very nice. It is a stone door, but has all kinds of etchings in it. Uh, I'm going to run up to the, the first door on the left and just look through it to make sure because if we I don't want to go through the middle one first just so we don't get snuck up on from behind in case there's somebody in these doors so I'll check the one on the left door on the left is locked I lost the ability to count uh, 21 <laughs> I lost the ability uh, to count uh, uh, math 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 21. negative one to yeah. math yeah okay <laughs> uh, the door is unlocked uh, you fling it open with ease and you actually see that the ground is collapsed downward into a tunnel Hmm. I'm going to back out and kind of close that door. <laughs> okay, not this one. I'm going to walk up and, and look at the etchings on that middle door, and is that something that either of us might recognize? Is it similar to the one, um, the etchings we saw earlier, that only Avador could really read? It does indeed, yes. Avador, come read this for me. I'm just, <laughs> not that I can't read, I'm just... Not well, you still have it. spider webs in your eyes, I see. I, I'm just not feeling it right now. If you oh, could okay, please read yeah, this for yeah, me. Yeah. I see, I see. Oh, and blood. Oh, and rubies in your eyes. You peer at the uh, uh, the etchings, and the etchings simply say, uh, uh, only the wise will gain entrance. And you see that there is um, a line underneath the text that you would understand that this is something that's very uh, commonly done in Elvish that you are supposed to run your fingers across the etching. Ooh, like brow? Kind of. Being somewhat of an elf, I'm going to run my fingers across that. There it is. I ran my fingers across. <laughs> you run your fingers across the etching, and the, um, the writings actually illuminate for a moment, and they seem to start rearranging. It says, I am Lord Voldemort. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> um... Okay, uh, it's it's rearranged itself. Uh, Avador, what is what does it say now? Uh, <laughs> the etchings rearrange themselves, and you start to read. All about, but cannot be seen. Can be captured, cannot be held. No throat, but can be heard. Oh, one this of these. This is a riddle. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Welcome to Devin's D&D. Where is riddles, a troll? Riddles abound. There is a troll down here. <laughs> We cannot cross. That must have... Uh, maybe it's for a magic uh, word or phrase that'll open this door. Um, it, Can I see Could the... you read that again, Avador? I just wasn't... I was thinking about something else. All about, but cannot be seen. Can be captured. Cannot be held. No throat, but can be heard. I believe it to be air. I mean, uh... <clears throat> I just say the the word out loud. Um, air? And then I tap at the door. Hello? Uh, at the phrase of air, uh, you actually see the writings and etchings begin to swirl about. Oh, okay. Fly back into the door. The door illuminates very lightly, and you hear locking mechanisms begin working, and the door opens ajar. Hey, I, uh, I ajarred the door. <laughs> um, let's uh, obviously nothing bad can happen. Let's let's take a peek. Obviously, obviously. <laughs> obviously. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna open it the rest of the way and and then kind of um, position my shield kind of in front of me with my rapier raised up behind as I, I I walk in, just trying to be prepared for something that might hop out. Um, and, and I'm gonna use my dark vision to look around inside this room. So what do I see? Uh, the room itself uh, is a large circular dome-like uh, room with a solitary sarcophagus in the center of it. The walls themselves have actually been um, worn down a bit, but you can tell that there was once a mural here uh, depicting some sort of painting. Shall we rob the grave? Uh, 
That seems fun. I have a crowbar. Try to pry that open. A crowbar. <laughs> you used magic to open such door. Well, and now technically, you're using I used crowbar. words. But, <laughs> you broke wind. I, I used air. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go I'm gonna walk up to the sarcophagus. Uh getting a closer look at the sarcophagus, you see that the relief sculpture made uh in the sarcophagus is that what looks like a elf. This elf, the at least from the sculpture standpoint, looks to be of a beautiful, graceful uh male elf. Uh the garb that was carved into the stone makes it look like it was of noble birth of some kind. Mm-hmm the etchings across the side and back and top of which it lays all appear to be a very fine elven crafted runes. I look at, I look at Sarah and I'm like, um, Sarah of the nine, have you seen this? Uh, take a look at this. Uh, she is going to roll a history check and she fails. Sarah quizzically looks at the, at the uh, sarcophagus and, puzzles a bit but she she uh she eventually says no this is uh this is a uh a being i'm i'm unfamiliar with well thanks for that and then i pull out my crowbar and i'm trying to open the sarcophagus (laughs) just gonna try to pry it open chris you uh slam the crowbar into the side of the (laughs) sarcophagus um go ahead and roll me your strength check uh using a crowbar you now get advantage oh okay 13 uh, 13, uh, you wince that crowbar down, you can kind of start to feel the stone give a bit, but you push it down so fast that it just slides right back down and you almost drop the crowbar, but the, the sarcophagus is not open. Mm. Are there any, are there any, uh, words or anything around in, in order to open in the same way that we did with the door? Uh, if you would like to, you can roll perception. 17. You actually are able to kind of capture the mural a little bit more as you step inside, especially with the torchlight now being in there. And this is sort of depicting an elf who is killing a lot of people. Shepard, is this a family member of yours? Uh, With that now being in context, if you would like to re-roll a history check, you may. Ten. Ten. (laughs) Oh, Sarah did much better. Um, Thank you, Sarah. (laughs) (laughs) Scratching her head. Sarah goes and actually puts a hand on Shepard's shoulder as she's looking up at the at the mural. And she says, I would not open that. Well, now, of course, I have to open it. Tell me. (laughs) Sounds like a challenge. She uh, she looks slightly agape and she says, I now remember who this one is. This is the tomb of Bellion the Bloody. So we're still going to open this, right? Yeah, we're going to open it. She says, it. we're definitely going to open I, this. I wouldn't. And you can kind of tell why <laughs> she's a bit hesitant. Um, uh, you start to look at the sarcophagus again as if you're going to like, well, I'm going to open that shit up. And you look at where you put the crowbar the first time. A little bit of blood looks like it's seeping out. Hey everyone, it's your Dungeon Master Devin here, thanking you for listening to this episode of Party in Peril. You can encounter us on Twitter or Instagram at Party in Peril. And if you liked this episode, please consider subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, rating, uh, hacking or slashing, and whatever else you can do out there on social media or wherever you listen to podcasts. But thanks again for listening. And remember, roll high, crit hard. See you next time. Presented by Nerd Sloth. A place for lazy nerds. If you like what you heard, consider donating at patreon.com slash nerdslot so we can continue bringing you quality shows. Be sure to also leave us a review and share your favorite episodes and clips on social media. If you're looking for more content, catch us on YouTube and Twitch or visit us at nerdsloth.com.